YouTube, Matt M. Roy back again, back to another vlog video for today. It is two, uh, Tuesday, May 24th of 2016, and uh, we finally have a decently sunny day. That's right, guys. This uh, weather has been really crazy. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it, even though you guys don't want me to say it. El Nino. <laughs> But, um, yeah, seriously, it's finally sunny, the clouds have cleared up, albeit for a short period, for about a day, tomorrow is supposed to get uh, some storms, as one of my YouTube users uh, pointed out, he's from uh, Kansas, and uh, he said that stuff's coming our way, and sure enough, that's what the Weather Bureau says. Um, I don't have too much planned today, however, I do want to show you guys a couple of things I've been working on. Um, I've talked a little bit about this uh, pre previously, maybe a couple of months ago. Uh, back around the year 2000, uh, a company started producing uh, electrolytic capacitors, and it basically stole the mixture from its rival company. Well, it didn't do a good job stealing it because it did not steal the uh, catalyst or the, um, the agent that's supposed to keep the electrolytes stable. And what wound up happening was a lot of computers that had those uh, inferior capacitors would tend to balloon and eventually explode. Well, I thought we were done with those. I mean, this 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 came back in the 2000s. The, the oldest computer I've seen to have this problem was maybe like a 2005 or 2006 HP. Well, guess what, guys? I just ran into it again. Um, I was... Customer brought in this uh, Dell Optiplex. 745, which I'm dating probably right from around 2007, maybe 2008. And sure enough, she's got capacitor plague. I'm going to try to hold this up so you guys can see it, but right on the three tall caps right there, you can see they're kind of mushrooming. It's really hard to do this because it's kind of heavy. You got one, two, and three right there. They are totally mushroomed. One of them is actually uh, starting to leak as we speak, so I don't know, guys. I guess uh, I'm probably going to see more of these. I, like I said, I'm really shocked because that is the newest computer I've ever worked on that's had that particular problem, and it's something that should never have happened in reality. Really, we should not have to deal with this at all. Um, it was only because this one company was greedy, didn't want to figure out how to make the... Uh, the, the the mixture properly stole it from their rival company and didn't do it right <laughs> and that's pretty much why they're exploding and let me see if I can figure out what kind of capacitors these are actually are these are <laughs> seeing if they got any uh, names on them they don't actually have a name on them so they're just really generic ones they look they kind of look like Nichicon capacitors, but not, I don't think they are. They're probably just some cheap rip-offs, right? <laughs> but um, there's a few things I want to do. I'm still working on those computers I picked up on the weekend. Uh, one, one of them wound up having a bad motherboard, and that was the Leno one of those Lenovo towers. And I kind of had a I was suspicious about it when I opened it because there was no hard drive, which I knew about. Uh, there was also no memory, and the power supply was totally disconnected. And when I went to test it, sure enough, the motherboard was dead. So that one's going to be relegated to a part system for sure. The other one I have not tested yet, but I have no reason to believe it doesn't work because everything is complete in there, uh, minus the hard drive. Which, but I do have some extra 500 gig drives that I got I'll be able to uh, throw in there. However, I did complete one system. I'm going to bring you over here and show you. So be back in just a minute. Alright guys, so this is one of the systems that I completed. This is that Dell Vostro 220S. Uh, this wound up being a decent system, just to give you guys a quick overview. It's got a dual layer DVD burner in here, which I'm not sure why it's not opening, probably because it's uh, damp. I'll have to look at that. There we go. Just being sluggish. Dual layer DVD burner, no light scribe or anything, just uh, your basic burner. In here, is where they would have put a floppy drive or a memory card reader, but this particular one didn't have that feature. Got two front USB 2.0 ports and then your front audio ports. Uh, this does have a Pentium processor. I'll go ahead and show you that real quick. Just running uh, CC Cleaner. It's a Pentium dual core E5200 running at 2.5 gigahertz 
with 4 gigs of RAM and it's got the Intel G45, G43 chipset. So Intel graphics, not, not, definitely not made for gaming, but more than enough for the person that's going to be getting this computer. This is a business class computer and it's actually going to be going back into a business environment. So all in all, not a bad system. Uh, what I've done here, because again, it's going to a business environment, I've actually installed two 500 gigabyte hard drives for basically a total of one terabyte of hard drive space. And the reason I did that is, since it's going in a business environment, they need to be able to have a redundant backup of their data. So what they're going to do is they're going to install, put all their data on the C drive and then make a backup to it on the D drive. And they also have an external hard drive they're going to go ahead and... Uh, put it on as to as well so they're going to have uh, a basically a backup and then a redundant backup which is going to be either on the external hard drive or here depending on how you look at it well guys look who came in to say hi Simon. <whistles> he does this once in a while come here bud come on buddy you want to say hi this is where he, this is where he sleeps once in a while during the day not maybe about once a week or so come here bud come here bud Say hi. Loves to do this. Loves to rub. Good boy. Good boy. Gets lonesome during the day. He he got so used to mom being home when she was uh, recovering from her knee surgery that he gets really lonesome during the day now. Before that, pff, he couldn't care less. He wouldn't even come in at all. You being a good cat. Yeah. I do need to uh, take him to the vet because I'm kind of getting more concerned about that lump on his tail. It, uh, it is kind of growing, and uh, at his age, you know, it could be severe. So I think in the next couple of weeks, he's going to be going to the vet, and we're going to see if uh, we can get them to remove it. I'm hoping, hoping they don't have to take off his tail. I know that is always a chance when he, they're at this age and they have problems like that, but yeah, we'll try to keep your tail if we can. He's being really friendly right now. It's just kind of, kind of antsy. I think I think with the the weather we've had, just like a human, because he's older, his joints tend to ache. Because I've noticed he has a hard time getting up on uh, on mom's bed now. Because there, it's a king bed, so it's a little bit taller than the other ones. Simey, hey, good boy, good boy, good boy. Yeah. Oh, I know. You're a YouTube star, Simon. Good kitty. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. I just love the markings on his head. They remind me so much of, like, a Siamese or a Burmese with those uh, those lines he has up there. And, of course, he's kind of uh, multi-stripe. He's actually got tiger stripes, and then he's got spots on him as well. Very unique-looking uh, orange cat, aren't you, buddy? You want to you want to go to sleep? I think we're disturbing his slumber now. He'll take this for about four or five minutes, and then he'll just want to go right to sleep. Typical for cats. Cats, on average, sleep about 17 or 18 hours a day. So, you know, it's it's definitely nap time because he's uh, as soon as mom gets home, he's pretty much up all the rest of the night until she goes to bed. So, say from about 5:30 to midnight, that's when his most active time is. I'm actually really surprised he's staying with me this long. Usually he comes up here and he'll plop right up there and sleep for a while. You want to go to bed? You want to go to bed? Come on, bud. Come on, son. Come on, son. Oh, okay. He wants to go over here today. Come on. Yep. All right, Simon. Go to, go to bed. Go to bed. All right, guys. It is now 12.44 p.m. Just got back from having lunch, and I did help the thrift store and found a couple of goodies. First thing I found here is a very nicely made General Electric forehead hi-fi stereo VCR. They call this the Profict video system. I think that's a riot, kind of a name, a play on the pro name there. You got the power button here, stop and eject. All well, the rest of the controls, with the exception of the play, fast forward and rewind, are kind of hidden under this door here. Let's see if I can get this one hand in. You got uh, record, pause, tape speed, input selection, TV VCR, and then your 
channel down and up buttons and I just realized I cleaned this and I didn't wipe that good enough so I'm gonna go ahead and get a cloth and uh, wipe all the uh, solution out of there all right that's much better no more water pooling there I don't want it to get behind the buttons and cause any short circuits when I actually plug this in again I did try this there and it does function so I'm really excited to have this because unlike the more modern VCRs this probably dates from the early 90s and this is really solidly built I mean I don't even have to take it apart you guys can look in there and see it's got a full metal construction you got you can actually see the head back there um, it's hard to make a lot of other things out but just holding this you can feel the weight in there it's very substantial and how long has it been so you guys have seen that on a uh, v, uh, VCR General Electric and that is like their old logo so I definitely dates this I think somewhere in the early 90s and it says it's an HQ remote on-screen programming which unfortunately I didn't get the remote but I do believe I have an RCA remote that will work with this go ahead and bring you guys to the back here show you the different plugs we have have the regular antenna plug so this is where you plug your cable and or satellite in from and then the out to TV this would be going right to your TV now bear in mind this was designed for an older generation of TVs pre high definition so these are pretty much not going to be used anymore in my case I'm going to be using these when I hook this up these are the RCA inputs and outputs this is the uh, input and the out so basically you could plug in to the in portion you could plug in something like a DVD player uh, a satellite box or in my case the Fios box you can actually record shows to VHS and then the output goes to the TV itself so you can see what you've recorded got your channel 3 and 4 selection those actually uh, go with the uh, these over here basically when you had this hooked via the coaxial cable you could choose whether or not to have it work on channel 3 or 4 and that was a really good thing because at least in our area in New York uh, channel 3 was uh, had a lot of uh, distortion so if I had it set to channel 3 you would get a lot of fuzziness on the screen so I actually set it to channel 4 and I used it on that and it seemed to work very well um, I was not able to get an, a date on this. Um, I can probably do some research later on by the serial number. Um, you guys can pause the video if you want to read that. But it was made in Korea by Thompson Consumer Electronics, which uh, is a very typical that they made. They were basically General Electric. That's our, who had General Electric made their products for them. Um, the model number on this is VG4217. And there's this label here basically just saying that licensed by Telesonic Systems under U.S. patent numbers. So basically this is just saying that this has some, these are the patents that were used to create this. And probably that it um, it's okay to use in the United States and Canada. So yeah, not a bad find for something that works. I wound up paying um, maybe about $5 for that. It really wasn't much. Actually it was less than that because... Um, it was 25% off today, and it was $5.98, so probably more around like $4. And just one other little thing I got. I got a pair of these uh, HP USB speakers, and I gave $1.98 minus 25%, so I probably wound up paying more like $1.40 for those. And what I mean by USB, these are actually powered via a USB cable. You basically plug this into the computer. It's one of the USB ports on your computer. It doesn't matter which one. And then this other end plugs into the regular headphone or audio out jack. And you have a pair of speakers that you don't actually have to plug into the wall, which I absolutely love. And for the price, you really couldn't go wrong with these. All right, guys, I'm going to end the vlog here for today. But before I do, I wanted to give you guys a quick update on the hater situation with my channel. Um, it is definitely getting better, and I want to thank you guys for uh, liking that video that I did uh, at the beginning of the search for the trailer. A little section where I kind of uh, thank the haters for helping me out. And to be honest with you guys, it is kind of true. Let me explain. This is the one where I picked up a bunch of haters. You can actually see under here, this was my bad drivers in Hampton Roads, and then my vlog for May 19th. Both of those, I had zero dislikes. And then the very next one... Um, was the, when I set up the Kindle Fire. That's the one that really got the hate. That's got 63 dislikes to 31 likes. And somebody had mentioned that they thought the, the hate may have come from the fact that it was a Kindle that I was setting up and there may be some haters of Kindles out there. And that may or may not be true. I'm not sure. 
But as you can see, that actually definitely rolled over to the next vlog, which was the one I did for the when we were searching for a trailer. And as you can see, it's gotten that one was a little bit better. I got 34 likes to 15 dislikes, but you can see the views have substantially increased. Some of my older videos here, like this one, had 184 views, 246, 167, 290, and then 647 for the one that I picked up all those haters from. Then uh, 444, and then. And then up here, the very last one, 430, where I only have two dislikes. So the haters are definitely going away. And it's almost a shame because, like I said, they really help help me out. They really actually promote my channel. I know a lot of you guys don't like to see the haters. But you know what? If my message is getting out there, then I really don't mind it at all. So this is going to be the end of the vlog for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it's not as long as some of my other ones. But... Uh, Stick around and there are going to be some really long, much longer ones in the near future. As I say every day, have a blessed day.